That's the way the ball feels in the hands of a future star. Here's the real, real deal. That's the way the ball spins on the way to a winning three. Oh, yes! That's the way it heats up when handled by the player. You can change your fate. The first pitch for the NBA draft. This is how the fans react when the chips fall where they may. Goes to the Indiana Pacers. This is the way the game grows, like the way the wind blows. That's the way the ball bounces. In the game of chance, that is. The NBA Draft Lottery. NBA Draft Lottery, and what an intriguing one it is. I'm Rachel Nichols. I'll be joined soon by Richard Jefferson, Jay Billis here in Los Angeles, as well as Adrian Wojnarowski from the Western Conference Finals in Phoenix. And the star of the night, the lottery order, that will be presented from Secaucus, New Jersey. In addition, we're joined by representatives from all of the 14 teams hoping for that number one pick here tonight. And let's get started by looking at our draft lottery headlines. The Rockets, the Pistons, the Magic, they have the best possible odds to get the number one pick at 14%. But that still leaves plenty of room for other teams to jump into the mix. And there is a lot of star power worth jumping up for at the top of this draft class, including Oklahoma State's Kate Cunningham, Zaga's Jalen Suggs. Meanwhile, three big trades have major implications on tonight's lottery, starting with the Rockets, who could see the rights to their pick go to the Thunder if that pick falls out of the top four. That was part of the deal Houston made to acquire the since-departed Russell Westbrook. Similarly, the Bulls could also lose their pick to the Magic if it falls out of the top four. That was a condition of the Nikola Vucevic deal. And finally, as part of the Andrew Wiggins D'Angelo Russell trade, the Timberwolves lose their pick to the Warriors if it falls out of the top three, which means the Warriors could end up walking away with two lottery picks tonight. Woj, welcome in. What is the latest with Golden State? Uh, Rachel, I think when you look at this lottery tonight, there are multiple teams, I'm told, Cleveland, Minnesota, Houston, who are going to be very aggressive if they're at the top of this lottery with perhaps putting those those picks in trades to bring back veteran, uh, young veteran players or all-star level players to accelerate their rebuilds. But the Golden State Warriors, they were in this position last year, having the number two pick. They selected Jinx Weissman, and now they have a chance, a, almost a 70% chance, uh, to be able to get Minnesota's pick and be potentially uh, in the lottery twice and I think uh, Bob Myers the Golden State general manager he, he tells me they're gonna be in the same situation as last year if, if some great players became available and they can get a, a all-star level player to go with Steph Curry and the return of Clay Thompson Draymond Green you know that's certainly gonna be an avenue that the Warriors are gonna explore Thank you so much, Woj. So that's the Warriors side of things. The Timberwolves certainly hoping things play out, that they get the lottery luck and get to keep their pick if it jumps into that top three or maybe even number one overall, which is where they picked last year, acquiring Anthony Edwards. Edwards was fantastic for the Wolves this season, leading all rookies in scoring. And he joins us now as the Wolves representative tonight. Anthony, welcome. You know, you had the experience of watching the draft lottery last year, knowing that how it panned out, you weren't just a spectator. It was going to have a direct impact on your life and your future, just like the top prospects we've mentioned are sitting around right now going through the same thing. So tell us, what is it like? I mean, it's, it's mind-blowing. It's, it's kind of, you'd be kind of nervous just watching it to see who's going to get, like, the first pick, the second pick, the third pick. And after you see that, then you see where you is on a uh, mock draft and you go from there. <laughs> yeah, you start maybe buying a few winter coats in your case, that sort of thing. Yeah, for sure. What was the yeah. biggest <laughs> experience you had during your rookie year that made an impact on you and you can use in the future? Um, I think Ricky Rubio uh, had a great impact on my rookie year as far as just being a leader on and off the court and, you know, showing up every day ready to work and never uh, taking days off. Well, it certainly paid off. Congratulations on so much individual success this season. We will look forward to more team success next season as well. We appreciate you joining us. Most definitely appreciate it. 
Now, there's another team that could walk away with two lottery picks tonight, the Oklahoma City Thunder, and that is just the start of the whole of first-rounders the Thunder have. OKC just got another pick in their trade of Al Horford for Kemba Walker, because of course they did, which means they have three first-round picks in this year's draft. And if you add that to the mountain of other future assets they have, you arrive at the gaudy figure of 18 first-round picks, first-rounders they own over the next seven drafts. Just incredible. Now, all of that is well and good for OKC, but the Rockets, of course, would prefer to keep that pick, thank you very much, which they will if it falls in the top four. And no one better to represent the team than Hakeem Olajuwon, the top overall pick himself in the 84 draft, who, of course, went on to become a two-time NBA Finals MVP. Hakeem, thank you so much for joining us. The Rockets, of course, going through a dramatic change this past season with James Harden leaving. What do you think is most most important for the franchise as it sets out here on a new course? Well, I think we just uh, we build and uh, we have a, a lot of uh, young talent, uh, but looking for that leadership, uh, you know, rebuilding is always very tough, but I think uh, we're in a very good position for these draft choices. Uh, if we can get, uh, we can put it our pick for for the top pick in the, in, the, in the draft. We certainly wish you the best of luck, Hakeem, for getting that pick. Thank you so much for joining us. And, and I want to turn into the studio here. Richard, some huge possible swings of fate, right? We just talked about Houston, OKC, Minnesota, Golden State. But also fascinating is that what happens tonight can affect teams that aren't even in the lottery, right? Yeah, famously, you know, if you look at the Brooklyn Nets, they didn't have any pick for multiple years. But what they did is they made a very interesting move. You look back in 2017 when Lonzo Ball became available and he was the Laker local boy. So then D'Angelo Russell, he became on the trade block. The Brooklyn Nets go out and get D'Angelo Russell. And like Woj said, it accelerated the Brooklyn Nets uh, rebuild. So now all of a sudden you get D'Angelo Russell. He becomes an all-star. The team goes to the postseason and then it becomes very inviting for big name free agents to go there. You look at KD, you look at Kyrie. So even though they weren't directly involved in the lottery, the lottery definitely affected their ability to rebuild extremely quickly. So the Nets have a big three basically because that ping pong ball fell into the Lakers lap there in that lottery years ago. Now that's the team side from the players side though Jay. Who is on the top of your draft board that these teams that hope they get that luck are going to take? You know Rachel one of the deepest drafts I can recall since I've been doing this and the top of the list is Cade Cunningham of Oklahoma State. At 6'8 he is a point guard with extraordinary abilities. Got all the tools a complete player, a playmaker, three level scorer, shoots 40% from three. Next is Evan Mobley the center from USC. He's a versatile defender and shot blocker of pick and roll defending big that can switch out on guards number three Jalen Suggs of Gonzaga an excellent leader surgical in pick and roll situations an elite passer and can play on the defensive end of the floor a quarterback in high school and shows it with his ability to pass Jalen Green out of the G League uh, maybe the best scorer in this draft at least potentially and then Davion Mitchell uh, from Baylor national champion the best individual defender in the draft can get up underneath you and he is explosive in transition, a much improved shooter that can knock down three-point shots. He may be he may be small, but he's got a huge heart and can really play. Small relative to other basketball players. <laughs> I'm five foot four over here, but sure, as luck would have it, two of those players you were talking about, Baylor's Davion Mitchell, USC's Evan Mobley, they will be joining us in the next segment. And last but certainly not least, Leon Newsom and Mark Dielli, they have brought the envelopes to the podium, so yes, it will be time to reveal the lottery order when we come back from this break.